You know, it only seems like last weekend when I was showing you this, my new tool set that I designed, and already it's been superseded by this block of aluminium. Let's see why. Hello fellow CNC nuts, and welcome. I'd like to start by thanking all of you who took the time to leave a comment on my last video about my little tool setting gauge here. I'd especially like to thank John Rebel, who sent me a new macro for UCCNC, which carries out a really cunning trick. It basically makes this here obsolete. Now it's not entirely obsolete if you own a machine that does not allow you to alter the macros on it and you still want to do the little trick I showed you last week, then this here will still do the job for you. And if you don't want to muck around changing macros, then again, you can still use a hardware solution like this here. But if you prefer, you can just get away with a normal tool setter like this. So what's the trick that his little macro does? Well, it's really incredibly simple. Whenever you do an auto tool change, it pops up a box, and that box asks, how thick is your material? So if you're setting your tool setter on top of your stock, then the answer is zero. If you're going to set the tool setter onto the surface of the spoil board, then the answer is the nominal thickness of your material. It's really incredibly simple. Now, for those of you who don't use UCCNC, I've spent my week trying to work out how to make one for Mac 3 and finally succeeded. I've made two versions of it, one using a single pass for those who want to do that and one using a double pass. So, let's see it in action. So, here are the two pieces of stock I was using in last week's episode to set my tool to. I'm going to first start by setting my cutter to the surface of the stock. So I put my tool setter on top, hit auto tool zero, and unlike other tool setting macros, this one comes up with uh, enter material thickness offset. I'm just going to hit enter because I'm doing it to the surface of my material here. It does one touch off, raises a little bit, and does a second one to slower speed. Now if I go to origin point, the cutter goes down and sits on the surface of the material. This time I want to zero it with respect to the spoil board. Again I hit auto tool zero and this time when it comes up with enter material thickness offset, I'm going to enter 12. Again the cutter will come down touch off, do a second slower touch off, and raise. If I do an origin point now, it goes back and sits on the surface of the material. But because this material, again, is still slightly thicker than 12 millimeters, it will just take a small skim off it there. You can see where it's scuffed up the surface. Exactly the same as it did when I used this tool setter. Now again, we can do exactly the same with the 18mm. Uh, lift the cutter up, do an auto tool zero, I'm going to hit enter because the answer is zero, there is no offset. Okay, and if I go to origin point, again, it comes down onto the surface of my material. I want to do it to the surface of my spoil board here, auto tool zero, and I'm going to enter 18. Go enter. And again, it's the same thing. Touch off. A second touch off. And a retract. I'm going to go to origin point, and there we go there. And again, this here, is just taking a little skim off the top of my MDF because 
the MDF is slightly thicker than 18 millimeters. So as you can see, the new method works perfectly well and does exactly the same thing as the old one, but with a software solution rather than hardware. And of course you have the advantage that you have an infinite number of nominal thicknesses at your disposal, whereas with the stepped gauge, of course, you are limited to the number of actual steps on it. So now let's have a look at it in a real life situation. I've got a part I need to machine, but unfortunately I've lost the CAD files for it and I can't be bothered redrawing them. I still have the G-code, so I can machine it from that. Unfortunately, the new material I'm going to use is about one millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch thicker than the old material. Now, normally this would be a problem, but because of the way I machine things anyway, I don't need to change anything. I'm simply going to pick and choose whether I zero my cut to the surface or to the bottom of the material, and I'll end up with exactly what I want when I'm finished. I've already set the X and Y zero position for this project, and now I need to set my Z. I've chosen to do this one reference to the tabletop because I'll be drilling holes right through the material. When I press the Auto Tool Zero button, a box comes up requesting material thickness. I put 18 millimeters into it and hit OK. The cutter now zeroes itself and applies the required offset. With the first cut complete, I now need to do a tool change and then re-zero the cutter. This time I've chosen to do it to the surface of the material. And that's because it's critical that the cut be accurate to the top of the material and not to the bottom of it. Again I hit the Auto Tool Zero button and up comes my Material Thickness Offset box. This time I'm just going to hit the Enter key because I do not need a Material Thickness Offset as I'm zeroing to the surface of my material. Each time I get a tool change request, I re-zero the cutter either to the surface of the material or the bottom of the material, that would be the spoil board, according to what the requirements are. So for the final cut, I'll be cutting right through my material, so it's important that I reference the cut against the spoil board. Again, when I do the auto tool, I'll be entering 18 as the thickness of the material. Now it should be noted that 18 is not the material thickness, but what I told my CAM software the material thickness was when I made the file. Well that came out really well. I'm pleased with the uh, result there and more pleased the fact that I don't need to redraw that part so I can cut it. It's a great example of why zeroing to the tabletop can be really handy. Now I deliberately haven't shown you how I went about wiring up the tool setter and configuring Mac 3 and or UC CNC. I will cover that in the next episode so you'll be able to see how I did that. Now of course Many of you know already how to do that and might wish to give the macros or script file a try. So if you follow the link under this video, you'll be taken off to my website to a page dedicated to this particular video where you'll find those scripts and macros available for download. Big thank you again to John for providing the UC CNC macro. Don't forget to read any notes that I put around those macros in case there's an error and they need to be changed. If you do find an issue with it, please let us know and we'll get that fixed and we'll put an updated version on the website to replace anything that uh, has an issue. Okay, well that about wraps it up for this week. 
don't forget to like and subscribe and join me next week when we'll be doing that tool setter install. Cheers.